Hi, good afternoon. It's afternoon here. Uh, my name's Gordon. For those who don't know me, for those who do know me, hello again. Um, I'm a therapist and I'm an ex Jehovah's Witness. So, lots of my the focus in, in things that I do um, is is based on helping people who have had an experience like uh, we have as Jehovah's Witnesses. And what I'm discovering is that, really, the majority of people, whether they've been in a, in a fundamentalist sect, cult, religion or not, have issues. Okay, And most of the issues I'm finding are from childhood because that's when we have a, a tremendous amount of imprinting going on in our in our our personality becomes imprinted okay um, so what happens is this that um, what happens to you as a child and very very importantly from zero to eleven that period there there are some extreme periods of imprinting the very early years but also after that until we become what we would class as a, um, an adolescent, adolescent uh, you know, a, um, a teenager. So in the years before that, the majority of our personality, the majority of, of who we are deep down is imprinted on us. Now, can you hear that word imprinted? Now, that means that what happens to us is put onto us. It's printed onto us. Okay, because when we're that age, we don't really have a lot of choice in what is being done to us. If things are done unto us rather than um, us giving permission for things to be done. In later life, when we have a choice, we can allow people to do things to us or not. When we're children, we, we, don't, we don't even know we have that option. We are told, do this, we do it. We're told, think this way, we think this way. We're told... Um, be like this, we are like that. And we don't really question it. Okay? Now that effect, that experience, affects the rest of our life. If you allow it to. You see, just because it's there and it's imprinted on your mind does not mean that you have to accept that as who you are for the rest of your life. Because that is not who you are. You are not the result of the people that were around you from the age of 0 to 11 or 12. That is not who you are. You are a fundamentally good person. Yeah? That has attracted a bit of shit. Okay? So... What I, I think what I'm, the point of this video, and I, and I want to say that it's been a long time since I've made a video because I didn't have anything to say. And I'm not going to just make videos and regurgitate the same things or to talk about my past experiences as a Jehovah's Witness and how bad they were. Because that will not empower you. For me to have, for any, for me to get any value out of helping you, I want to help you to get into a better place. I want to help you to become more resourceful, okay? To have more options. So, look, what I'm discovering about people who've had the Jehovah's Witness experience, okay? Typically, I see a pattern. The pattern is this, that um, they have pretty low self-esteem. Well, what a surprise. They find that they don't particularly like the person who they are, or who they think they are. Okay, simple question. Look at the camera, look at me, and answer this question. On a scale of zero, zero being goddamn awful, and ten being goddamn wonderful, how much do you like yourself right now as you think about it? On a scale of 0 to 10, how much do you like yourself? Okay, as a person. Now, what I find is that people who have not resolved their past score low, quite lowly. So it's not uncommon to have people saying, well, I'm 0, or I'm 3, or 4 or 5. 
And I'm here to tell you this, that when you score how much you like yourself, and I'm not talking about this egotistical, I'm the best, I'm the, that's, that's a false li likening, okay? I'm talking about a genuine like of who you are. Unless you are scoring up there in the eights, the nines and the tens, and you should be a 10, okay? You should be a 10, then you need to do some work. It's time to do some work, okay? Um, the reason for that is this. You are the only person that you have got. Do you understand this? There is nobody else. You are your one supporter. You are the one person who is always there for you. You can't count on anybody else. Other people have their lives. They have their shit going on. They have their stuff. There's only you. Now, if you don't like who you are, then you are buggered. You are in big trouble. Why? Because if you're the only one you've got, there's nobody else that you can count on, and you don't like who you are, what's left? So if you, if you answered below eight, nine, or 10 on my question, then there's stuff that you need to do. There is stuff that you need to do. Why do we not like ourselves? What's going on? Well, what's happened is, during your imprinting years, you have been told, this is good and this is bad. If you do this, you are good. And if you do that, you are bad. If you do this, you're good and maybe, just maybe, you'll live forever. And if you do this, you're bad and you will die. But really die. A bad, horrible, painful, rotten death. And what's worse, you'll know about it. You'll know why you're dying. And that's worse than the people who are dying, who don't know why they're dying. They're just dying. You know. Okay? So they, that's what happened during your imprinting years. Now you've left those behind, so you think. But what's happened is this. All of the things that you were taught as a child that were good, if, if you were brought up as a witness when you were a child, okay? And this is, these are the people who tend to have extreme issues, okay? As a child, you were taught what was good. Now, we all know that none of us achieved that anyway. But that's okay if you continue to be a Jehovah's Witness and keep asking for forgiveness and keep um, doing little bits and pieces that make you feel better, better, 